Hello, 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 and welcome to another amazing episode of My Violet Tendencies with me, Marvelous Matt Nix. And uh, guys, this week's episode is going to be really great. I promise you that. Uh, I got a chance to sit down with uh, one of my good friends, uh, one third of the head trainers here at the Freelance Wrestling Academy, uh, Isaiah Velasquez. Um, Honestly, it's like it's barely any wrestling talk, uh, which is fun, and it's fine. We get to we get to dive deep into the person that is uh, Isaiah Velasquez, and um, man, we had a great time sitting here. Uh, we got to actually record it in person here at my office at the Freelance Wrestling Academy. And I don't know if you guys have seen any pictures that I posted online on social media uh, that have got some some pretty sweet like LED lights that I can control from my phone. Uh, and it really kind of just sets like a nice, fun little atmosphere here uh, in the office. It, it's, it's just a really chill vibe. Um, and it's just fun for, you know, if I'm just hanging out. <laughs> just uh, hanging out up here in bathed in purple light. Um, that's not far to, <laughs> that far off from the truth. Uh, but yeah, this week's episode is going to be really great. Um, before we do talk about that, though... Uh, Last week, I got a chance to uh, wrestle for the first time in quite some time. Uh, I, I was part of the Warrior Wrestling event that they had at uh, Marion Catholic High School in Chicago Heights. Uh, and just, man, it was really, really, really well run, uh, safe for you know fans and wrestlers alike. Uh, they had uh, the wrestling ring out on the football field, in the center of the football field, and they had everything measured out, like, strategically all the way around the field that every single spot where like a, a party of people were sitting was like perfectly social distance away from everybody else um and it was just like wild to see that many people like out there like that and i think they sold well over uh 450 tickets uh for this event and uh kudos to them uh for being able to, to navigate through this covid uh, scare and, and, and be able to run a successful wrestling event. And, you know, it was awesome to be a part of it. And I finally got to debut my brand new gear, the purple poppy attire, uh, made by Isaiah Velasquez. And, uh, you know, he really did a great job. Finally, finally something that I can wear that makes me look somewhat presentable. Um, but without further ado, uh, let's get into this interview with Isaias Velasquez. I know it's like it's it sucks because like making jokes, inappropriate jokes now. It's like you got to be like, oh, is that you know, piss anybody off, or is like, mm -hmm. or am I gonna get canceled for this? Or I, I said something about the uh, the pandemic on this UK podcast that I did the other day, and I messaged him back and I told him, hey probably cut that out because I don't want people to take it out of context and think that I'm saying a certain thing and I said because I think it was like oh there's no right or, or wrong way to like be safe in this pandemic because if you think about it I don't think it really like we're learning new things every freaking day oh yeah I think uh there are I mean there's certainly like hey these are like ways to to do things exactly. where you, you aren't going to get sick but also like people are just kind of figuring it out on their own like mm -hmm. oh well I do this instead and yeah you know, exactly. I took a COVID test today. Oh yeah. It sucked. Which one did you do? The nose. Oh yeah. I had to do it by myself. Ooh. You had to do do it yourself, or? Yeah. Ooh, that's and even worse. It is because you're doing it yourself. So yeah. You know, you have that natural resistance to not go stick all it into your brain. Yeah. But I, I was reading the thing, and I just wanted to make sure that I didn't have it. So it shows like the instructions, and it says, push the Q-tip up your nose until you feel resistance. <laughs> Okay. And then as you do that, they're like move it around, like twirl it Ooh. in your fingers for 15 seconds. And they're literally timing you. They're watching you do it. And I think um, the, the lady was even telling me, push it as far as you can go. Oh. And she, she was counting me down. And then she even told me when I had like five seconds left. And she said, okay, now switch nostrils. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I like literally, I looked like I was like bawling my eyes. Yeah. And afterwards, like, oh, this is gross. God. Yeah, the one I got done, they like... I was, I didn't know she was going to stick it in my nose. And she's just like, oh yeah. She's like, okay, uh, put, she's like, tilt your head back. And I, I just go like back like that. And then she just like takes the, the long Q-tip and just oh. sticks it into my nose. And I'm just like, I'm standing there with a couple of my coworkers 
and I, my face just goes, mm, and I'm like, oh, that, that doesn't feel good. Ugh. It just like, it didn't like, it didn't hurt, but it was very uncomfortable. It's, yeah, <laughs> because it's, it's dry. It's dry. Oh, yeah. Just rubbing around in your nose. <laughs> I was surprised I didn't have like a, get a nosebleed from that. Yeah. I feel like I've been getting a lot of nosebleeds lately that like, <laughs> Maybe maybe not from that, but <laughs> okay. I just it's like my entire life I never really had like nosebleeds like a lot, and then I, f- I feel like in the last month I've gotten like three, and I'm like this is I mean maybe it's like because like in our in in the shop now we have like a uh, like a machine that uh, well no because like you're, when you it's dry air right that makes your nose bleed when your nose gets dry I think so maybe. I, yeah, because I know as a kid, I would always suffer from nosebleeds, random nosebleeds, all the time, and my mom had a, a humidifier in my room because that would help. Oh, okay. And I would get random nosebleeds just out of nowhere. I'd just be hanging out, playing with my toys, and next thing I know, I just feel drips of blood going down my face. <laughs> it was insane. Well, that makes no sense then for, like, well, in, in the shop now, we have, like, a, a, a new machine that, like, puts way more moisture in the air because the machine, the printers need like a certain humidity level to work. Yeah. And so we have this machine now that keeps all the machines at a, like a, a good humidity level. Yeah. So it's basically spewing out like warm air. Um, and we just like, I don't know. I was, I was like, Oh, maybe it's because of this machine that like I'm getting all these nosebleeds, but I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Cause if anything, it should be preventing it even more. It's the cancerous fumes that it's leading off. It's giving me, uh, God. <laughs> giving me nosebleeds. It's all the, it's all the shirt fibers that I've been breathing in for the last six years. Just, <laughs> it's just growing in my head. <laughs> just all the ink from the, from the heat presses and stuff. Oh yeah, dude. So especially some, some like garments when you press them. Yeah. I know you, you know, for yeah. like, firsthand, like, you know how it is. Like, some diff- different garments, like when you press them, they give off like a different smell. Uh-huh. And like, dude, sometimes I would press shirts and I'd be like, oh, it smells pretty good. Like it smelled like food, you know? I was like, oh, this smells like, I, I feel like something I press like would smell like fried chicken. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what, some sort of cotton maybe. Yeah. Or maybe you're just hungry. Maybe I was hungry. I don't know. We could smell Popeyes from, from the shop sometimes when the doors are open. So I, I, I'd be so overweight. Dude, I like. I'm, I'm honestly very proud of myself for the l- little amounts of Popeyes that I've eaten yeah. since like working here, <laughs> and like, um, because I was like, damn, dude, like, growing up, like when when like my parents would we oh we're gonna order out we're gonna get Popeyes uh-huh. it'd always be like hell yeah Popeyes like <laughs> Popeyes like as like they say in Little Mickey Popeyes chicken is the shit isn't it because <laughs> it really is dude like the spicy spicy uh, recipe on there. Uh-huh. You know? It's awesome. I love that. I've never had the chicken sandwich, and I'm always tempted. Sometimes when I walk, when I drive by a Popeyes, I always debate: should I get one? Should I not? <laughs> I don't know. I've never had it either. Hmm. I don't think I, I'm like you know what? Like because everyone's like it's good, it's amazing. As every time I see something like that where people are like, like going crazy, like for for food mm-hmm. items like that, I'm just like, it's probably good. But it's not, it cannot be as good as these people are like going yeah. ape shit about. Absolutely. And it's the same thing with uh, with movies. I remember when somebody hyped up so much um, Boondock Saints. Oh. And then I finally watched it. And I remember after watching it, I, I messaged, it was Jordan. Oh. He hyped it up and I messaged Jordan. Yeah, it was okay. And he <laughs> said, what the hell is wrong? Yeah, he was upset. He said, what the hell is wrong with you? Blah, blah, blah. Now when I watched it back years later after everyone didn't hype it up for me, I watched it again and I said, yeah, this movie's really good. I like it. God. Yeah, I, it's so funny. Like, I, my girlfriend was the same way. She was like, oh, like, yeah, I've heard it was, I've heard it was okay, like, whatever. And then, like, we watched it. And she was like, oh, shit. Yeah, this movie's yeah. pretty dope. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, too. Mm-hmm. I think it's funny. Like, <laughs> that fucking Rocco, dude. Rocco's my favorite. <laughs> you could swear on your podcast, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. When, he, uh, when he goes, why are fucking everybody starts shooting everywhere? That part popped me so hard. <laughs> Uh, I like when the, the part when they when they're like drunk and they're like in the apartment and he like slams the gun on the table and he just <laughs> blows the cat away and then his like drugged out girlfriend comes home and yeah. she's like calling the cat and she's and he's like they're calling him and he's freaking out because they're trying to come and kill him and he's like why where's my cat and he's just like I killed your cat you druggy bitch and then like that kills me every time just like he looks so demented like yeah. when he's saying it too like 
Or when he puts so on the face mask and it's just these humongous holes and you can literally just <laughs> see his face. You can see his face. <laughs> he's like, what? Oh, you guys know, didn't tell me you're masks and he's got like pantyhose on his yeah. head or some shit. <laughs> oh, man. So how are you, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, besides all the ranting right now, um, as best as I can be during all of this that's going on, I feel like life is almost kind of getting back to normal in some instances. Yeah. I feel I, like we're getting used to, we're, we're getting used to being in quarantine. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like I, like I told you today, um, today you wanted to do the podcast earlier and I told you, uh, I had a hockey game from four thirty to six. So just 20 guys on the ice, just skating and I'm like, yeah, it's pretty normal now. And then just being able to go to the gym and then training, of course. And I mean, training here, we, have like a couple more precautions and we limit our classes and stuff, but I mean, go to the gym and there's like 50 plus people just coughing everywhere. But God, is, just... is it like, <laughs> so I haven't been, I mean, look at you, look at me and you could tell I haven't, I haven't been to a gym in a while. Um, me too. I was, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's funny because like, uh, when I moved up, up on the North side now, yeah. I was like, Oh hell yeah. There's this, there's a planet fitness right there. And I'm mm-hmm. like, it's close. I can walk there from my house. Like, it'll be awesome. It's close to my work too. So I can, yeah. I can go on like my lunch breaks if I wanted to. And then like shortly after this, when everything went crazy and, and I'm just, I've been like holding off on going, like going to like check it out and stuff just cause I'm like, I'm not sure like how that works now. Yeah. It's like, like, how does that work? Do you have to like wait outside for people to for come in? Yeah. Um, this is, this depends, I guess. I guess it depends. I feel I feel like it probably varies on the location that you're at. Because I know the LA Fitness that we go to, um, they require you to wear masks at all times. No, the whole time you're in there. Yeah, even when you're doing cardio and you're lifting and everything, I'm like dying. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But I know they require you to wear a mask uh, at all times. They don't have the showers open. They don't have the water fountains open. they have the pools open for some odd reason. <laughs> and I know me personally, I was I was saying that I wouldn't go swimming during all this because when I swim, I know as soon as I come up out of the water, I spit water out. Oh, yeah. So I'm pretty sure... Most people do yeah. the same thing. And I would like to believe that if somebody has the virus and they're just being ignorant and still going to the gym and they go for a swim and then they spit the water out, of course, the virus is not in the water and I don't know how much chlorine can actually kill it. So... I opt not to, but I mean, for the, like, I know the basketball courts aren't open either, the ones that, the gym that I go to, but other than that, oh, they take your temperature. Oh, like at the door and shit, they yeah, have like a gun? They have, yeah, like venting, so whenever you scan in, they take your temperature, and if you're okay, then they let you go in. They even have a table with a bunch of sanitizing bottles, and they say, please take one and just spray down the equipment before and after use all the time. Um, and then they don't have mats anymore. I guess because people just sweat, sweat on them and yeah. don't wipe them so down. They, yeah, exactly. So they take they took them away. So I just let them on the road. <laughs> See, that's a good thing though. Like uh, prior to all this happening, like yeah. I re- I would remember like being at the gym and like I would always like I would grab a towel with me and I would just like they would have spray bottles in select places around and I would I would spray down my shit because I would like I I sweat a lot so like yeah, when I like I'm would sit on a machine or something. I would leave like a big like streak mark on this on the back of the thing, so I'm like, okay, let me fucking clean this off because I don't want to be an asshole. Yeah. But like, it's funny because like I would remember like seeing people like just not even caring and just like le- like walking away and just leaving their fucking sweat stains everywhere like that, and I'm like, man, like I can't even imagine somebody trying to do that nowadays. Like people would like fucking lose their shit. You'd be amazed at how gross a gym is. I mean, having worked at LA Fitness downtown for five years. You probably seen some shit. Yeah, I, I, as a trainer, I remember I wasn't wearing uh, my trainer shirt, so nobody knew that I was, uh, like, working there for now, or at the time, and I was in the bathroom, and I saw some guy literally come into the bathroom, urinate, and literally just go straight back out without washing his hands, and as I, and I was, I think I was washing my hands, so he literally... He went to the bathroom, he left, and as um going behind him, he literally grabs kettlebells without washing his hands. Oh. So, yeah. And then I've also seen some other guy, or person, whatever, um, 
sneeze right into their hands and then grab dumbbells. God. So <laughs> people wonder how this virus got spread so quickly. It's just people like that. People just acting in their normal ignorant selves. Mm-hmm. Just, God. <laughs> I like, and that's the thing, like, like we, we're taught that as, like, kids. Like, yeah. I, like to this day, like, I, I don't really do the sneezing in the arm too often just because, like, I feel like I, I like, will miss. Yeah. So I'll usually, <laughs> like, I'll usually, like, if no one's around me, I'll just sneeze away from me. Mm-hmm. But if, like, there's people nearby, I'll pull my shirt, my shirt open and just sneeze into my shirt, which is kind of gross so it's kind of gross but i i mean it's less gross than sneezing into my hands maybe uh, <laughs> so i'm just like walking around with like spit on my chest and i was like it's like, just like phlegm like oh, uh, i could feel it just <laughs> wiping around on me um i think the best story i, I have yet to tell the story on a podcast of any sorts um the, my favorite story that i ever have of working at la fitness was going downstairs into the locker room and seeing some guy blow drying his hair, <laughs> he has his genitals on the counter. Just resting there. Yeah, just resting, just hanging out. Uh, and then he takes the blow dryer that he was drying his hair with, and he starts blow drying the crack of his ass. And then his privates as well, too. And I remember just, it was a train wreck. It was one of those things where you couldn't look away. And you're just like, is this guy really doing this? Yeah, exactly. I was like, what the hell is going on here? I remember I had to tell the, uh, the people that cleaned that, like, hey, can you wipe down that, uh, that counter because this guy was doing this and probably kind of wiped down the hair dryer as well, too, because he got pretty close. Yeah, he was but, sticking it up his ass. <laughs> but pretty much, yeah, it was, it was pretty nuts. God. Literally. Well, yeah, literally, <laughs> literally pretty nuts. Uh, t- uh, tell, me, tell me some other crazy stories about, like, just shit that went down when you were working at, the, at LA Fitness. Oh, man. I can't... Or just anything that I guess that comes to, <laughs> comes to mind immediately. Um, I remember one time this lady was working out and she just had a tank top on. And she didn't have a bra. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the other members of the gym came up to us and was saying, hey, can you please tell her to put a bra on? And I said, uh, I don't think I can because it can be seen as harassment or I don't know. I, I was just like, I don't feel comfortable asking somebody to put a bra on especially about like their body yeah and in this case it could be a very sensitive subject so this lady got upset and she said well i'm gonna say something i'm like okay you can go like and i'm standing by the trainer's desk and with an earshot i could hear her hey can you please put a bra on and then she literally looks at her she gets mad and she says why they're just titties (laughs) (laughs) but the way that she said it I was ro- I was dying. Me and the other trainers that were there just all started busting out laughing. You know, I'm like, so we would literally constantly just like walk around and be like, they just titties. What they just the- titties. <laughs> it's the perfect answer, though. Yeah, it's exactly. Um, and she didn't put a bra on, so there's that. Hell yeah, she won. She won. <laughs> she won. <laughs> God. Oh, so like, we were talking earlier, and uh, you mentioned you brought up the 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 meme that you were showing me with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> And it's 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 like him smirking and like laughing with a with a glass in his hand. What is it? The I think you can pull it. Pull it. I, yeah, I don't want to butcher the the actual. I text. was literally laying on my sofa, laughing for about I think it was ten minutes, just laughing to myself. My dog looked at me and thought I was nuts. Probably. Uh, it was so funny. It was hilarious. <laughs> I don't know how to find it now, but that's what I do. I'm just. You know, I have nothing to do and, you know. Meme searching. Pretty much. Here, let's see. When the annoying kid at the restaurant finally trips and bangs his head on the table. <laughs> and it's Leonardo DiCaprio. I forget. Well, I think it's from Django. I think so, yeah. I want to say. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just kind of like <laughs> smirking <laughs> and laughing. And, and it's just like, I mean, everyone everyone has seen this happen. Like, uh-huh. at least like being out somewhere and somebody's kid is just like running around doing shit. And the parents are just like. Not even caring because for some reason they read it in a parenting book somewhere that well, if you just ignore them and let them get their energy out, it'll be fine. And people, it'll, they'll realize they're not getting it. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You got to yell at your kids. Yeah. Uh, but I laughed and I was like, I was like, oh, I was that, <laughs> I was that kid when I was little. <laughs> and I told you, I was like, when I was little, I used to like climb things and just take my clothes off. Which I, I told them to do while we started podcasting. <laughs> And, and I'm actually naked right now, but, um, <laughs> so, uh, 
uh, like really quickly, a story that comes to mind is like, I rem- oh, well, I don't remember this because I was like two or mm-hmm. three. Um, but it was the first time my parents took me and my sister to Disney World. Which uh, the Disney World is the one in. Uh, you went to Disney World at two years old. Yeah. You fancy. Oh yeah. They took it. I went to McDonald's at two years old. <laughs> but, so they took me and my sister, and it's. I think it, my mom was telling me that like when at the time, it was like if you're two and under, like they let you in for free. Oh. Okay. So they were like, "Fuck yeah, let's go!" And then like. My sister, who's a year older than me, she's three, and uh, my mom was just like, oh, or, or my dad was just like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll just we'll just say she's two. Like, who cares? They're so close in age. Like, no one's gonna like just like ask. Mexicans. <laughs> yeah, no one's gonna ask. And like my my mom's just like, my mom. She's like, I was freaking out. She's like, I I felt nauseous because we were like gonna lie to these people at the gate. And I yeah. was just like, why though? Like, they're not gonna. Nobody would care. And my dad's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're both like. And then they, my sister, like uh, both of us at that age, like, we were both like just really big talkers. We talk, talk, talk all the time. And like my sister specifically was like pretty well spoken for her age. Like, and my mom's like, well, that's not going to work. She's going to open her mouth and they're going to know she's not two. And so my mom, my, they were just like, don't, just don't talk when we're coming through. Just don't say anything. Don't talk. And she's like, I forget she, the way my mom tells the story. She's like, my, my sister was like saying something. And I'm just like looking at her and I'm just, and I just go, sis, sis, why are you talking like a baby? Why are you talking like a baby, sis? And my mom's like, shut, just shut up, shut up. Like, she wants to smack you in the back of the <laughs> And so we get through, we get in like fine. Like it wasn't a big deal at all, obviously. And so they're like, okay, cool. We're going to go do this picture with Mickey Mouse. So we're like, okay. They like file us into this like room or like a hallway and they like, you're waiting in line, waiting in line. And then they like, they let you in the room. There's like a dude in the Mickey Mouse costume and then they're like, okay, take the picture and then get the fuck out. Um, so like they, we finally get into the room apparently. Oh no. So standing in the hallway and I'm just standing there and I guess I, I, I put my arms like through my shirt and I'm like, pull my head out and I'm not, my dad's like, what are you doing? Like put your clothes back on. And then like, we get it we finally get into the room and they're like, okay, let everybody get set. They're like, where's Nicholas? turn around and like my shirt's off and like my pants are coming off and like, get over here. Were like you climbing something? I, at that point I wasn't climbing oh, okay. anything, but, but, um, there's definitely been times where I've been like, oh God, I so me, so many like family parties where I would just like climb on the couch and I would like, I would be like jumping on people or some shit. I was, a ter- <laughs> I was like a terror when I was like young. Like I think they definitely thought I had like ADHD or something like, they're just like, this kid's like crazy. I was the complete opposite. <clears throat> My mom said that I'd never like to get dirty. Um, now you love being dirty. No, <laughs> <laughs> I never like to get dirty. I was, if I had something on my hand that was of some sort of dirt or whatever, um, I would always go up to her and like show her my hand and be like, can you wipe this off for me? <laughs> um, which makes sense now because I, I pretty much have OCD when it comes to just having things set. Like in their place, I don't know how many times I had to tell her. I just feel so weird calling her Kylie, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you said her name already, so like I always, I always, um, I always sometimes tell like Brianna, like, hey, can you just please put things back in the place? She's like, yeah, I'm like okay, and then <laughs> a couple of hours later, I'm like it's not there, and then I just put it back. She's like, oh, I'm gonna do it. And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. But I, <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, I just like grew up. <clears throat> always having like strict OCD. It wasn't until I was probably around like mid twenties that I realized I have a real like not bad, but I have a good case of OCD. Run so it's like things need to be in their place. They need to be put in certain positions. It was around the time when I started living on my own. It was that I just realized um, like people would come over and they'd be like, "You came over to my apartment a couple of times," and I would tell you, "Oh yeah, it's kind of dirty right now." I'd be like, "No, it's not." It's like like sparkling <laughs> clean. <laughs> but yeah, I was. That's where it came from, just being a kid and just having it all the time. God, I was, as a kid, I, I don't think I ever had any like OCD tendencies, but like as like a, as an adult now, like I'm very much like, I like having everything kind of like, in, in, like yep. you said, in, in a way that where I know where everything is, everything looks nice and neat. Uh, and it, it like, it bugs me when it's like one little thing out of like, out of order or just like... I don't even know. Like it's it's hard to explain. It's I hard know, to explain to somebody that doesn't know. What you're I know. The, I know the feeling. But you yeah. just like it. Like it just like 
bothers you. Like, it's to no end. And you're just like, I have to, okay, and then you have to fix it. And then, God. <laughs> Mental. <laughs> she, she, uh, she even tells me to this day, if something's out of place, um, she was like, is your OCD bothering me? I said, yeah. She's like, just fix it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's a simple pleasures in life. Oh, man. Um, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> Whatever. I feel like we just started. I, I mean, I know when I started, when you asked me to do the podcast, and which I was excited to do, um, I knew it wasn't going to be like any other podcast that I've done where they're just like, okay, so what about wrestling and blah, blah, and this and that. And I said, I told myself, I'm literally probably going to just talk to Nick and just ramble about random things, which we so have. Far we have. <laughs> which we have. Um, I don't know. I mean, do you want to read off some of the questions that people asked or do you want to wait until later? We can, we can get into those in a, in a sec. Okay. I did actually, I did have something that I, I was like, I was, cause I was talking to Birdo earlier Okay. and, uh, I love Birdo. I love Birdo. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, I was like, I he's like, what are you guys going to talk about? And I was like, oh, I was like, I don't even know really. And then I, I was like, I do want to ask you like, so when, when, when we first started training, okay. like when it was like, it was me, Craig, Castro, Olsen, Domi, um, uh, training at Boz's place yeah, on, and Thursdays. on Thursday nights and, uh, you guys would come up there and, mm-hmm. and like help, help us out. And like, at this point, like I say, like you guys helped train us because you kind of did, like you guys were there every week and you, you know, you, you guys worked with us when he wasn't like yeah. doing stuff with us. He was yeah. kind of just like, not that he wasn't doing stuff, but Give like your money, no. <laughs> <laughs> you guys kind of put, put in a little bit more effort with us yeah, and we would stay after training. I remember when Boz would. He would end training at, I think, what, 9.30? I think so, yeah. And then Boz trusted me to a point where he, I would ask him, hey, can we just stick around afterwards and just roll around? He's like, well, I'm not sticking around, so you lock up. And I think sometimes we would stay until 12 or 1 in the morning sometimes. Just yeah. Just rolling around, just trying stupid things. Which luckily, none of us got hurt. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> no one would have ever heard us scream. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, specifically, I guess specifically back in that in that era of time or whatever yeah. like is there anything like uh, i don't even know what i'm like asking like do you like do you have anything that you remember about us like when we were starting like you're just like oh, these fucking kids or like <laughs> i never thought that um <clears throat> i always thought you guys were cool and i i, I like it reminded you're you're like that group that you guys were with it was like you domi um olsen craig and castro you guys reminded me so much of like how Myself, Jordan, uh, I'm going to name off some names that probably people don't know, but uh, like TS, um, even Kalisto, because he would always come around with us. Yeah. Too. Um, Kalisto and like Lamar Titan and guys like that. Like you guys reminded me of us. So that I think that's why I was always, I always wanted to help you guys out because I kind of like, it, it was almost just, it was very just like we were mirroring each other. Yeah. <clears throat> so I kind of knew how you guys, like you, I knew that you guys needed help because we didn't get help at all whatsoever. And I told the students that all the time. Is, I remember back in Windy City, because that's where I started, um, they would literally tell us, this is the Windy City, like this is how we do things here, and this is the only way, and blah, blah, blah. And, this mm-hmm. and, that. and then when we started, and they would tell us never to go out, like only work for Windy City. Okay, you guys run a show every three months. How am I going to get better at wrestling? or whatever, blah, 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 and then, I mean, we started venturing out on our own, and as we ventured out on our own, we realized, oh, there's a ton more that we are not learning at all whatsoever, and um, so in that case, like, there were, I know we were, I don't know how many years in I was when you came around, I think it might have been, this is 2010, so six years, so I was in about six years. And I still, to this day, I'll, like six years in, I probably did not know much at all whatsoever. There was probably small little things that um, I could have helped you out with. And I felt, I just felt like a responsibility almost like, hey, like, let me help these people out. Like, let me help these guys out. Um, even if it's the small little nuggets of information that I have acquired over six years of working random uh, indie companies where they only pay me ten dollars and I had to drive six hours out of my way to go like work this place and you know I'm working probably a couple of my friends too at these shows so I'm not even actually like really learning anything but <clears throat> luckily there were a couple of times like 
wrestling for IPW in, in Indianapolis, mm -hmm. and then there was a place called EWF, like Mary, I think it was Mary in Indiana. It was like I'm on mud show. Uh, no, not so much. There was literally, I think, 10 people in the crowd. Oh, okay. And it, they would run every week, so they would tell us, like, oh, whenever you want to come by. And then and when we came by, we came the first time, and they had me working. Like, they saw what we could do, and they kind of liked us, so they said, yeah, just come again. And then when they would, when we were coming back, they would like, have us work different people. So at least we were working different people. They were probably at the same skill level as us, but it was just still different people. But, I mean, that's just, like, small little things here and there. Um, but, yeah, it's just, like, taking those, like, taking... I felt almost kind of like I wanted to give back in any small way that I possibly could. And I know you guys were just eager and wanting to learn and just wanting to do, you know, just wanting to wrestle. So I was just always adamant about, like, helping you guys. So I remember, too, like, when we, when we started there, we yeah. were, like... So we all came from, like, doing backyard wrestling together for, like, ever. <laughs> I remember. And like we sh were like, okay, guys, like we literally huddled like before practice one day. We're just like, okay, we literally have to like pretend that we don't know how to like do and you guys are doing moon salt and shit. <laughs> and like, it's just funny because I remember like we we were like doing something, and Boz was just like, oh, you guys are a bit, like picking it up pretty fast or whatever. Like, because we like we had already like kind of like knew how to like run the ropes and like yeah. somewhat know how to bump and stuff. And um, I just remember like we were so scared to like even like remotely like mention that we've done that and i remember do you remember tully i do yeah he, i remember one time we were like all messing around after like practice and he like grabbed like a like a chair and he was like pretending to hit one of us and he's just like Ooh. and we're like oh no and he's like god just kidding i'm not a fucking yarder and we were just like yeah neither are we <laughs> like just like joking around just, just sweating yeah was like, like, oh, the like does he know <laughs> does he know like he knows God, we were so scared. And it's it's so funny to think about that, like then, yeah. and then like now. I'm just like I'm like I'm like literally like I'd, I'd even go as far to say that I'm like proud of like that part of my life. You know, doing like backyard wrestling. It's it's not something I'm ashamed of. Like it's something we did when we were kids. You know, the uh, the compilation video that you put together of all the bumps you took in backyard wrestling. <laughs> Love it. It was oh, amazing. Yeah. Just the amount of things that you took like shooting star presses to the ground mm -hmm. with no pads. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's, it's a good it's a good uh a good thing to show kids to be like hey don't do any of this <laughs> like if you want to like live a healthy life please don't don't do any of this if you want to walk normally past the age of 35 please don't do this mm, okay. yeah i remember like showing it to my mom too and be like hey mom look at this cool thing i made and she's just like oh my god what is wrong with you it's just destroying your body <laughs> yeah god i remember there was like i was i was talking about this with uh with some, it was uh, with uh, Warhorse at the, yeah. at the at the Warrior Show, because uh, somebody in our match wanted to take a bump from the apron to the to the turf, and they were like, "Yeah, it's just turf. Like, who oh cares?" And I'm like, "I said the same thing once. Like, <laughs> like I wrestled on a show, and we did like a spot on the apron. We were like fighting back and forth, and I was like, "Yeah, we'll fight back and forth." And then super kick me, and then I'll just take the super kick and turn and take a flip bump to the floor. It would, and it was on an indoor soccer field, like on a turf field. And I'm like, yeah, it's turf. Like, it's not going to hurt. Little did I realize that underneath that thin, thin, thin layer of turf is just concrete. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I just like flip and like my lower back is the first thing that hits oh. the ground. And I just remember like landing and being like, that was a mistake. Yeah. Ooh. Thankfully, I talked him out of doing that in our match. It's, um, I remember in Vanguard, there was against TS. Like, if people don't know who he is, it's Thomas Sinclair. Um, he doesn't wrestle any as often anymore, but, um, uh, Amber, we, I think they were filming it for iPay-Per-View at the time, which at that time, it was a big thing to do. Mm -hmm. iPay-Per-View was starting. And so I remember they wanted to, um, they wanted to edit it and put it out literally that same night and edit it. So all of us were all like pumped up and like jacked up, like, yeah, let's do it. It was like, let's, let's go crazy. And I remember um, me and TS literally came up with this idea. Hey, a lot of people always tease um, grabbing somebody and suplexing them from the inside of the ring to the outside of the ring. You want to just suplex each other to the outside of the ring? And he said, I remember he looked at me and he said, yeah, I'll do it. And he was like, are you going to bump on the apron? And I said, no, if I'm suplexing you to the outside, I'm going to take the bump with you. 
So we do the suplex. And literally, if you watch the clip, I think there's a clip online. I'm pretty sure. Um, if you watch the clip of us doing the suplex to the outside, both of our faces, just as soon as our body smack, yeah, we just like wide eye and T.S. leans over me. He's like, that was fucking stupid. I'm like, yep, it was. <laughs> Never again. God, that sounds like like the hardest bump ever. Just Dude, like, it knocked, literally knocked the wind out of me and I saw white as oh. soon as I smacked. It was just, oh. That's the scariest thing too is when you get hit so hard that your vision just like like mm-hmm. either blacks out or like whites out. White, I think whiting out is like scarier because like you're yeah. still conscious when that happens. <laughs> Blacking out, you're just like whatever. I'm I'm out cold. Uh-huh. Like I'll wake up when everything's cool. But oof. But yeah, I remember just taking that bump and I'm like, oh. yeah. God, I remember one time uh, it was a, on a CSW show. They had a hardcore <laughs> a hardcore battle royal or a hardcore royal rumble. Oh, it's even better. Yeah, so it was a Royal Rumble with oh. weapons. Oh. And I just remember, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, do you remember Do you remember Colin Cambridge? Yes, I do. Uh, I just remember I did something, and he had grabbed a, like, real stop sign. Like, a real, an actual stop sign. And I, like, I turned around, and I, he, like, this was not called at all. And he just, like, <laughs> goes to hit, like, he hits me with it, but he, like, throws it at me with like the with the wide eight, the wide side hits hitting me in the head yeah and it literally sounded like a gun going off in the building <laughs> and i just remember it hitting my head and whiting my vision going white and it like slowly came back to me and i just had this like burning sensation in the back of my throat and i was just like holy shit what the <laughs> like i had no idea what the heck just happened i'm sorry I'm like dying laughing. dude it was fucking scary <laughs> or not even sc- like literally like you know, I was like, yeah. what, 21 when it happened. Like, uh, it, uh, being 21 and getting hit in the head that hard, you're just like, oh, it's just, that was crazy, crazy yeah. man. Like, like, nowadays, I'm like, dude, I probably, like, almost died. Not <laughs> died, but probably, I probably for sure had a concussion from that. Like, I, I look back at some of the things that I've done, the, the crazy moves and bumps that I've taken, and I just watched the video sometimes and said, I could have literally broke my neck. But I just said, yeah, let's do it. Mm. And, yeah, I'm like, yeah, at least I'm walking now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm like I'm I'm grateful like because like there was a while when I was just like doing shit oh, all the time and and, you, and I, I like I specifically pulled you aside and I told you hey you don't have to do this to get booked just go in there and show that you can wrestle <laughs> yeah and then, and then you took a power bomb to a, a what is it a Guitar Hero drum set oh yeah <laughs> I, I I just found that clip recently too I yeah. was like oh this thing <laughs> oh fuck yeah no that was like probably. Probably some of the best advice I've ever gotten, honestly, from like yeah. from you and like I mean, I, pretty much anybody who's anybody would would probably t- say the same thing. But like, yeah. but it, like I remember being told that there was two things that you gave me like really good advice on that I still to this day I probably don't even remember any of them. That was the that was one of yeah. just like hey like you don't need to do that, and I just remember like like you know like in cartoons they show like the the wood. Like it's like a, a square, a square peg trying to go into a circle a hole. Uh-huh. It was that. And then it was just like, huh? Oh, I guess I don't. Like, it was like, I, like it just, it, like it just dawned on me for the first time. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. It was that. And I think the other one was you and Jordan both said this to me. Uh, it was like right when Twitter like first started. And I was like, I was just doing like, like just tweeting at like everybody and anything. And you guys were just like, don't tweet it like WWE superstars, like your friends with them. And I was like, oh, that like, was, oh that's, shit. That's more so, that was more so Jordan. Jordan? Yeah. yeah. I just remember being like, <laughs> oh yeah. Like now I'm like, I would never even like think about that. Yeah. Like, unless I was like being funny and like talking shit or something. Yeah. Um, but no, like I'm like, yeah, like, I, I, like I've told that to like some, like some of the students nowadays. I'm like, you know, t- like treat, treat yourself online how you would like, how you want to be you know, presented like as, yeah. as like an actual, uh, I don't want to say like as a star, but like hold yourself to like a higher standard. Like when you're yeah. interacting with people on, on social media, I get that completely. Cause I know me personally, like we're both friends with Ali. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever tweeted at him directly. Just saying random things. I just text him. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I mean, like, I've tagged him in stuff before, but yeah, like, tweeting yeah, yeah. directly at somebody like that. Like, it, and it's, it's kind of a weird thing to do in general to anybody, yeah. unless you're, like, having a conversation, I guess, but I don't know. Twitter's the worst, though. 
Twitter's the worst, but it's also the best. It uh, it proved to be the worst and the best in like the last few months. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like literally uh, causing a revolution. Yeah, so which almost. Is, I feel though. Um, I mean, it was good because it needed to happen. Because it just, I feel I, like how I tell the students all the time. I'm like, hey, uh, just be a good person. At the end of the day, just be a good person when it comes to. You know, in ring stuff, uh, like and out of the ring, and just conducting yourself as an individual. Just be a good person, and just you know, I, I tell them all the time, like, oh, don't give shit up, please. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, they're all following that too. Um, we have a bunch of like good people though, so we like, and that's the thing too is like I like I know people will like be like, oh yeah, like we have the best kids, or like you know, everyone likes to tout about their own mm-hmm. like school or just like even like like their own actual children. Um, but like the, when we, whenever somebody asks me about like the school here and I'm like, dude, like literally everybody that's involved is just like awesome. Like, yeah. every, like if there's nobody mm-hmm. that's here, you know, knock on wood. Yeah. That like, yeah. that I'm like, man, that guy's kind of like annoying or that guy's kind of like a piece of shit. Like everybody is like literally a good person. Like, I don't know how many times like somebody like not even me, but like one of my coworkers will be coming through and they're carrying a box or something and everybody's running over there and be like, do you need help carrying that? Do you, anything I need you to do? Like mm-hmm. shine your shoes? Like yeah. put air in tire? Like roast pedals at you before you walk? <laughs> yeah. Like when we, uh, I helped Berto um, move a couch. Uh, uh, Boogie Dog Dave, when he before, right before he moved uh, yeah. to Seattle, uh, which we miss you so much. Um, <laughs> right before he moved, uh, he was like, hey, you can just have my couch. Because Berto has been, had been trying to get a couch for up here for like ab. Yeah. Uh, which was the worst, trying to make that happen. But so we went and got the couch and we brought it back and like, uh, it, we had gotten back here right before like Sean's class had started and yeah. it was like Sean and a bunch of the, uh, the other kids were here and they all were just like, you guys need help moving this couch? And literally all of them stopped and helped. Like I didn't even like, we didn't even have to ask. Yeah. They just, they just did it. And I was like, oh shit. Like, thanks guys. Like yeah, they're good they people. saved us like probably in, like an hour of trying to figure out how to get this thing inside. Like they're good people. And you know, me, you, like me, you, Sean, we all know that they're all good people too. Um, and I think the best part about that is we, like, we know that they're good people and we don't have to say anything because other people say it for us. They all say, they, like, you could, whenever there's shows, I, I don't know how many times we've gotten tweets mm-hmm. where they're saying, oh, the kids from Freelance are really good. Like, they're good kids and blah, blah, blah. And they, they just talk about how well behaved they are and how they conduct themselves as professionals at the shows and stuff like that and how they're like just genuinely cool people. I think that's amazing. That that's like better to hear than like, oh, they're like, they're like the best in ring. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. cause that come, that'll come in time. Like people Absolutely. get better in ring, but yeah. like it's harder to teach people to, to be a decent human being. Yeah, for sure. Oh shit. Uh, do you want to, you, let's jump into some of these uh, questions. Let's do it. I gotta like. I'm curious. Covertly pull it up on my computer screen here. Ugh, hold on. A little bit of dead air, but that's okay. That's fine. You just edit that out. You edit that out, right? I don't edit anything. Oh, you don't? <laughs> I really so usually usually I don't. Um, I just feel like it. Just happy for you. I just gave my suplex. Just like that heavy <laughs> ASMR wrestling. Just like. Then tell me what you did. <laughs> Good boy. God, that that that's probably that's got to be a thing at some point, right? Like ASMR wrestling. Is it? I, maybe. I mean, it's probably if it's not a thing yet, like just, it probably could become a thing. I just watched Bob Ross. He is that still on Netflix? Uh, it's on Netflix and it's also on YouTube. Literally, you can just oh. Google his name. If you Google his name, he has his own uh, YouTube channel and it literally has almost all the episodes. So sometimes I'll just literally sit there and get lost and watch about two hours of Bob Ross. And just watch uh, It's a happy little mistake. Oh, dude. <laughs> I remember one time I, uh, I was texting. Uh, I was texting Brown. He's painting happy trees right now. 
<laughs> and then literally two minutes later, I was like, now he's making Happy Mountains. <laughs> She's getting right on like live to uh, like <laughs> essentially like live texting like everything that he's doing. God, that's so awesome. I uh, I had like not that much uh, like experience of watching that like when I was like younger and stuff, yeah. but like I remember in when I was in high school, we would uh, we would watch a lot of that like during for like our art classes mm-hmm. like when our art teacher was like gone. Um, but yeah, that's just, I mean it, it always like became like a meme almost like people were just like kind of like joking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, it did. I have Bob Ross socks. Do you really? Yeah, it says happy clubs. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Let me, okay, here we go. So let's jump into this first question here. Oh boy. Uh, first question, question from Byron Black 666 on Twitter. Okay. He asks, uh, who is your favorite wrestler, past and current? Uh, past would be Bret Hart. Without a question, um, I know I get a lot of crap for that all the time, but Bret Hart was my favorite as a kid, and then current, um, besides the obvious, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, besides her, uh, let's go with, um, man, there's a lot of good, a lot of good people currently. Yeah, I don't think I have one. It's just multiple people that I continuously watch. Uh, Finn Balor, Alex Shelley, Johnny Gargano. Um, Those are the top ones that come to my mind right away. Hell yeah. And actually, you have a match coming up this Saturday with Shelley at Black Label Pro. That didn't remind me. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. (laughs) And if you guys want to watch that show and that match specifically, you can watch it on IWTV and sign up with the promo code FREELANCE to get your free week trial. <laughs> like a little, a little plug right there. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Mike. I'm pretty sure Mikey's going to love it. <laughs> um, let's see what else is But yeah, that's what I, I would... Those are the ones that come to mind for sure. Those are pretty good. I know you say like a lot of people give flack about people's liking Bret Hart. Yeah. And... It's, I think it's funny because, like, it's it's undeniable how good he was. Yeah. Uh, it, I think it's just, like, people are more like, oh, it's, like, just the way he, like, talks shit, like, mm-hmm. now that he's, like, older and stuff. But that's, like, every fucking bitter old wrestler, like, talks shit about <laughs> everybody else. Oh, like, for sure. And Bret Hart, like, I love, I kind of, like, love how petty he is sometimes because, like, he's just, like, because <laughs> well, he, he's, so, he's so good. Like he's really so good that he he literally is just like yeah I can I can just talk shit about anybody else because I, I I was the best there Pretty was much. best there is best yeah. movie. I like I laughed about like when um when we had uh, Ultima Dragon here for like the seminar yeah and everyone's like asking him questions and all this stuff and uh he made me laugh when he's they were just like asking him, oh who's a good who's a good baby face like to watch uh-huh. and he's just like no one there's no good baby faces in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hell yeah, just fucking Dude, dunking on everyone. He's fucking Ultimo. Like, you can't... Like, John Cena, though, come on. Oh, fine. Yeah. But yeah, no, he, he, like, it was him, like, being like, no, there's no one. No one's good anymore. Me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for real. Me. I was waiting for you to say that, that he was just like, me. Me. Just watch. Just me. watch my matches. <laughs> uh, he also asks, uh, okay. he says, who trained you in wrestling? Steve Bob. Uh, he also yeah. trained me. And that's another thing, too. Um, I would say it all the time. I know a lot of people have plenty of things to say about Boz, uh, but I will never... He's a character, I'll say. <laughs> He's a character. Um, but I can honestly say, it, even to this day, like I love him, and he literally taught me a lot. So I feel like if there was no Steve Boz, then I would have never been able to do what I did in wrestling just because all the stuff that he taught me and he he really did look out for me um, I know I talk about old stories about Windy City where you know they would do the tough love and the hazing and all that stuff and he was one of those guys that literally as soon as he saw me he kind of he took a liking to me right away and he was always trying to help me all the time as much as he could as much as the boss can yeah he's a good, he's a good dude <laughs> he really is yeah he has his moments he's wrestling he's my wrestling dad yeah, he has his he has his moments where you know he could say some things you could be like oh okay, <laughs> but then you realize like it's just Boz. 
like it, it you know it is what it is and but you know to this day I still I still love him and I know sometimes I, I'll hear from other people they say like oh he misses you and he wants to like see you and this and that and just so we should we should invite him over one day we should invite him, invite him over for coffee and tea I don't know wait, wait why don't you have coffee and tea in know. case somebody doesn't want coffee you can drink your tea I'm pretty sure he wouldn't like coffee or tea probably he not he want something else I don't know uh, he, I remember go for a beer? at the after parties, he'd <laughs> yeah. be like, he'd be like drinking Miller High Life's and uh-huh. he'd just be like, I'm hydrating. <laughs> I'm hydrating. With, 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 with his shirt off. With his shirt off. To nobody else, brother. A hundred percent. Yep. Um, and then uh, his last, Brian's last question for you. He says, who or what got you into wrestling? Um, honestly, it was guys like Bret Hart. Uh, Bret Hart, Owen Hart. Uh, I remember, I always tell this story all the time where I remember being outside and when I came in, uh, my dad was watching wrestling and that was my first glimpse of wrestling. And I was automatically just drawn in. Just It was Hulk Hogan or the Road Warriors on, and they were just doing some promo segment. And I remember just, I literally got drawn in just from them because Hulk Hogan was Hulk Hogan. <laughs> uh, yeah, just like at that time, like he was just larger than life. And the same thing with the Road Warriors, like with the guys with the spikes and then they, they cut uh, actual matches. And I remember just watching matches and just being just blown away. Just as a kid, just like, oh, this is amazing. Just like, wow. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, and then I would start seeing guys that were, quote unquote, smaller. Guys like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and Owen Hart and those guys. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, you know, it's not just these humongous dudes. It's also guys that are somewhat, they're still jacked, but they're still like their average size height-wise. Um, so it was just that, just watching those guys and that. I think Bret Hart was um, the one who really influenced me and like want, and like really like made me fall in love with wrestling. I remember watching him versus Mr. Perfect. I think it was King of the Ring. And I remember watching that match as a kid. And I was like, oh, like yeah, this is so cool. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> was your dad a, like? Was your dad like a big wrestling fan? Not or really. Just, he was just like flipping the channels one day and just happened to it, stop. It was he was a casual fan. He would just watch it randomly. Like, he never watched Triple A or Lucha either, ever. Um, I would watch that on my own. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's the one who told me. He was like, hey, they're, it's on every Sunday morning. At the time, I think it was on every Sunday mornings at, like, 9, and it would go until 11. So it would be, like, a two-hour show. I think it was Triple A. Um, but he was very casual. Funny thing is my mom was actually more into wrestling than I was. Really? Yeah. She went to a wrestling show uh, when she was pregnant from me, and she said that whenever they would bum, I would kick. Oh, shit. So that was kind of cool. Um, that she told me that story, but I, yeah, it was more so my mom's side. Um, and like my uncle Joe who passed away, he was always there with me all the time. Like, like he would watch it just as much as we, like he was big into wrestling. He would record when my family didn't have cable, he would record all the money Night Raws for me. He would record all the pay-per-views for me. And then he, I would go to his house or he would come over and he would drop them off and be like, Oh, here, mijo, like you, you can watch everything. So that's how I watched wrestling. I, I don't know where those tapes are, but I'm I have boxes of tapes. Um, That's awesome. Somewhere, and somewhere, it's literally, just all these old Raws and superstars and all the old pay per views, just everything that he recorded for me. I'm pretty sure they're not. You can't play them anymore, but yeah, maybe, maybe. I think I have a box somewhere too of just like a bunch of stuff that I I would love to find and transfer those to like digital form yeah. or something. Like it's a lot of random stuff. Uh, ooh, this is a good question. Uh, it's kind of like a long, uh, maybe, well, it could be a long answer. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, from our good pal, Sterling Richards uh-huh. at RR Sterling on Twitter. I miss you, Sterling. Uh, we love you. We love you so much. Um, he says, talk about your time in Vanguard. There's so much. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a whole podcast. On that literally can. I think, uh, at the time, I think Jordan, who was the booker for a good portion of the time in Vanguard, he um, he had his own podcast. I don't know if it just died or if he's still kind of leaving it there just for a rainy day, um, but it was called Nerds and Marks. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I think we did two episodes where we talked about Vanguard pretty much. Um, so yeah, it could definitely be its own episode. Um, but to shorten it up and just give you a quote unquote, just a quick note answer, <laughs> um, it was fun. It was around the time when things at Windy City got a little just, hey, pay us. And it was just that. And then 
we're not running shows. Oh, you're a small guy, so you're opening the show. You're only going to get the lightweight title. Oh, uh, hey, can I wrestle my friend? Has he paid his dues yet? Yeah, he has. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> it, it, it was, that's how Windy City ended. Like, that's the, that, that was the exiting that I had. So, um, there was a couple other people that weren't too keen on all that, too, as well. And Frankie, you know Frankie. Yeah, yeah, Frankie I remember Brilliant. Frankie. He's the one who came up with the entire idea. Um, and did he come up with the name? Yeah, he did. He I, I always loved the, like, everything about, I don't mean to cut you off, sorry. Uh-huh. Like, every, everything, like, about Vanguard, when I when I started wrestling, I was just like, that's where I want to wrestle. Because, that's like, awesome. <laughs> it was just like, dude, it was like, everything was so sick. Like, mm-hmm. like all the graphics, and I know that was all you making all it the was, graphics and, the, yeah. and the, the video stuff. And it all looked so, it looked so professional. And, like, the name was just different. VWAA, Vanguard Wrestling All-Star yeah. Alliance. And I was just like, that sounds cool. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, it just all, like, it all kind of, like, worked. And I, I remember um, all that stuff that I did for Vanguard, I wanted to do for Windy City. Because that's just how, at the time, I was, like, what, 20, whatever. I was just really passionate. And I was just trying to use, you know, creating logos and making videos and doing all this stuff as a way to, as an outlet for me to not actually have to do just other stuff for my classes at Columbia. So I remember just like, like, oh, I'll make all these logos and I'll do this and I'll do that. I can make show, like show flyers and all that stuff. And he was like, he's like, how much is all that? That was their, quite like, that was their answer mm-hmm. or their question at Windy City. And I remember I told Frankie, I was like, I'll do all this stuff. I'm like, I'll make you a logo and I'll do this and blah, 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 and this and that. And he was like, okay, cool. And he let me. So I, me and Jordan were literally like, Jordan was more so about like the booking and like the storylines and all that stuff. And I was more so just about presentation. So I was always just trying to think about, Hey, like we should buy lights and blah, blah, blah. That whole setup, like the light stand and like the projector and all that stuff that all came from us going to our weight shows. And I remember me just sitting there one day and I was like, I can make Vanguard kind of like this, resemble this in a way, but like, of course have it our own. Yeah. And just kind of bring this production value to an indie that nobody really knows about. And then we literally just saved money and everybody, like, you know, there were some people that contributed and we bought all that stuff. And it's funny because the light stands that we use at Freelance are the ones that we use for Vanguard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 cr- the crates that they come in it's still just, have the, the yeah, VWA. I remember order. because I was the one who put the VWA uh, uh, stickers on it. So I, all that stuff, I literally, all those light stands, all that stuff, the DMX cables, like the DMX lighting, all that, I literally sat down and educated myself on all of that and how to use it and how to do everything and all that. Like I even talked to, um, what is it, Mike? Uh, Tom? Tom. There we go. Tom, oh yeah. I'm so sorry, Tom. Um, <laughs> I'm confusing with somebody else. But Tom, like, I even talked to Tom, and he's like, hey, if you have any pointers, I'm like, oh, dude, I could talk to you all day about this, <laughs> about, about, about all the light stuff. Um, but, yeah, like, I remember I took that part. I, I, there were so many people, and it, it's funny because I kind of get this sometimes now where everybody's like, oh, like, you, you're you in charge of, like, who gets on the shows and, and like, the booking and stuff. I'm like, I don't do any of that. I literally just do the light stuff, and I wrestle. It's like now, like, like oh, you do the booking for free, and it's like, no. I literally just show up and wrestle. Like, that's all I do. And now I'm a trainer. Like, that's literally all that I do. And, um, but it was fun. Like, it was a fun time. It was literally just pretty much kind of like the Frankie su- uh, oh, su- supplied everything. And it was more so uh, almost like a brainchild of mine and Jordan's and TS's and to some a certain extent, like Lamar Titan as well. Like, it was the four of us. Like, that's the vision that we always had when we, if we were to try to, like, do our own company. And Frankie allowed us to kind of, like, put that. He was like, okay, but, yeah, make sure these guys get booked and these guys. And I feel like that was kind of, like, the, meh. It was just, like, a come out, uh, okay. It was, yeah, it was, that was kind of, like, the meh part of Vanguard was, hey, these guys need to be on the show. And those guys weren't really team players. They were more, they were just very selfish. And I want to say, like, that was pretty much the downfall of, like, why that company never got up, like, off the ground. Um, It got to a point where I know, like, um, him and somebody else started booking that was completely different. And at that point, it was kind of, like, starting to get better. And then all of a sudden, 
um, certain people interjected themselves and like, no, we have to go back to doing this. And that was literally back to what the company was doing at the beginning. And it kind of literally just took a dive right again. Because I remember even on SmartMark, they were telling, like, Robles was telling us, like, oh, yeah, you're getting more, like, more requests for shows and stuff now that you guys are. That's, that was around the time when I, like, wrestled with guys against, like, Ricochet. Mm-hmm. And you were on that show. I was. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so around that time, like, Jordan was starting to bring, like, hey, like, let's take guys from the indies that nobody really knows about that are really fucking good and let's put them on our shows and have them wrestle against our guys. And we could like just like integrate all that stuff and just see like he did that with like guys like the hooligans and then like Danny Cannon, Eric Cannon, um, he did it with Ali, Corbin, like mm-hmm. all those guys. Like he was booking all those guys before Canadian Rainbow Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was booking all those guys before um, you know, they blew up. And um but yeah, it just it it never got its foot off the ground. And I know he took like a break. Uh, with Vanguard, and then um, I feel like that break that he took where he wasn't running shows for about like six to eight months, I feel, um, or I think it was shorter, I don't know, but I, I feel like that break is what really just kind of sealed the deal, because at that point, I feel like people had a sour taste in their mouth about the company, and they didn't really take it seriously, so when he started back up and he was booking all these awesome guys, mm-hmm. um, people didn't take a chance on it, because they were just, oh no, it's that. Like, blah, 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 whatever. That was, that was always so heartbreaking to see, like, to be, like, I was at, uh, at a lot of those shows yeah. that, like, um, there'd be, like, five people there. There was five people. I remember specifically, um, and, you know, sometimes people can say that Jordan's a little stubborn, which he is, um, but he just knows what he wants. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, like, he's still a good person, and I still consider him a really, I still consider him a really good friend. And, you know, I know that if I ever needed anything, he would be there in a heartbeat and vice versa. Yeah. So he's a good person. And I remember specifically one time he was paying me a good amount of money. I think it was like double of what, you know, I was asking for. And I remember he comes up to me with the envelope and he gives it to me. There's literally five people in the crowd, just like how you said. And mm-hmm. I was like, hey, man, like, no, I don't want this. I was like, there's five people in the crowd. I was like, this doesn't even cover the five people that came and paid and like paid to see this show. He was like, take the, take the money. And I'm like, no, you're losing your ass. I was like, if you're paying me this much money and you're paying everybody else around the same, holy crap, dude, are you like losing so much money? And he was like, you're going to offend me if you don't take this. You need to take this. So that's like Jordan, very stubborn. Yeah, but he, that just goes, like, he's stubborn, yes, but at the same time, he's a good person. Yeah, right? yeah. And the fact that he, like, I felt so guilty taking the money. Um, so I would find different ways to try to, like, get me. But <laughs> just like leave it in his stuff in his yeah. shirt. I even told him too. I was like, I'm gonna leave this in your underwear if you don't like you know, take it back. <laughs> but Vanguard was fun. It was fun. It was just I think it was uh, a missed opportunity. I, I feel like at a certain point it was kind of I don't want to say ahead of ahead. Of I, I think it was ahead of its time. I Definitely. think so too. And I feel like I feel like had it continued going in the direction that he had it going before like the whole break and when everything was kind of like going on the up because there was more and more people starting to come to the show it's every single show there was probably like 10 more people or five more people but it was still like an increase in what he was drawing and i feel like had he continued to do that and the the right eyes got put onto the project i think it would actually it it would probably still be around yeah no I, i definitely it's so weird to think about, like, well, if, like, one little thing would have gone differently, like, mm-hmm. how vastly different, like, the landscape of, like, our our Chicago scene yeah. would have been. Absolutely. Like, freelance might not have even existed. Yeah. Like, it's crazy to think about that. Mm-hmm. Everything happens for a reason. I like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that was a long answer. But that was a good one. That was my, the, the shortest answer I can give you for that whole entire stuff. Um, it was fun. Let me see what we got here. Um, slightly, <laughs> slightly similar question. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, this one's just from this one's from uh, our friend Coin Jones huh. at Real Coin Jones on Twitter. Okay. He just goes Chikara. Chikara. I think he's I think he's referencing just to talk talk about your time there. Are you, oh. You just, okay. Um. That was a that was uh, when I realized I n- knew nothing 
Oh, just like being in, in Quack's, like, under his learning tree? and Yeah, I mean, given, you know, stuff that's a, that has happened with him. And, oh, that's right. He's one of, um, one of the... Yeah. One um, of those guys. I will say this. I had no idea about any of that stuff, so uh, I knew him as, you know, uh, how he everyone saw him. So he was a... He, he taught me a lot. He taught me a lot, um, just like character stuff and just translating my actions in the ring a lot better so they make more sense uh, and just putting things together and making things mean more than what they should um, or just taking small things and making them mean a lot. And yeah, that was a, that was around the time when I was like, I see all these guys, you know, you have guys like Ophidian and Hollow Wicked and who is freaking awesome. I think he's like completely underrated. Like, oh, yeah. I don't even think 100%. to this. I don't even think to this day people are very familiar with Hollow Wicked. He's he's so good. Um, and then you have guys like Jigsaw and the Colony, like you know Green Ant and Fire Ant and all those guys and Soldier Ant and all them. But um, that's when I realized I was like, I was like, I know nothing compared to these guys. And I took that time as a humongous learning experience. And I remember I always tell I tell the students I was like. I learned a lot during that time, and then when freelance started, I had it was kind of like okay, I have all this knowledge, but I don't really know how to apply it to me. So like I had all this knowledge from Shakara that I had learned, which was awesome. I, I loved it too. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was really fun. It got tiring after a little while though, because I remember he would fly me out, and I'd be gone like Thursday night or Friday morning, and we would have shows Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and by Sunday I would be. <laughs> just exhausted yeah, yeah. Um, but that would I remember there was six months straight where I was literally just wrestling all the time which I mean that's the dream right but yeah it was it was a lot of fun um, I got to you know wrestle against guys like Eddie Kingston too Eddie. Uh, yeah um, <laughs> but yeah it was it was really cool it was a lot of fun I mean that's where I broke my orbital bone so that was cool Ooh, <laughs> yeah I remember that <laughs> one of the worst injuries um, but yeah I remember I, had, like, I picked up a lot just a lot, a lot of knowledge from my time there, and you know, I don't regret it. It was, it was really fun, for sure. Hell yeah! Uh, Coin also asks, "What's your go-to song for karaoke?" I don't sing. <laughs> Legit, I don't sing. If you were to do karaoke, hmm. let's say we got a couple drinks in you. Oh boy, I don't know. I mean, I do sing it by myself in my in the in my car in the shower. Not Are you a shower, shower singer? No? no, no, I don't. I'm not a shower singer. I'm a highway <laughs> singer. Hell yeah. Where I just pull down the windows and then just like blast the song so that way, even if somebody comes close, they can't hear me sing. They just hear the song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I was singing uh, Van Horn by St. Motel today. Okay. So maybe that. I don't know. Nice. But yeah, just a bunch of different stuff. Uh, at Jake M. Larson on Twitter asks... Hey, uh, Jake, I love you. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's a good dude. He's he awesome. says, uh, well, "He says when a new student enters the freelance wrestling academy, how long does it take for you to know if they're going to succeed? And has any student proven you wrong after a bad first impression?" A student has proven me wrong after a bad first impression, <laughs> and I was actually in the ring helping him today uh, for his match tomorrow at Zello Pro. Um, but I mean, I don't, I don't think he'll he'll mind if I say his name, but uh, Angel. I think he wrestled under Israel Angels. He gave me a bad first impression. And now I, I love the kid. He gave a lot of people a bad first he impression. He did, yeah. But it was one of those things where he didn't know. No. And now that he's smartened up to it, he, he's a good kid. I love him. Uh, he's he's awesome. And, uh, you know, I have his back now. I even told him the other day. I was like, I like, remember a year ago? And, like, now, I was like, now I'll do anything for you. Before, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had a good life. But, um, as far as being able to see uh, students, if they're going to succeed or not, I try to stay positive and I try to um, help them out and just be a, be a motivator, even when I do see people kind of giving up. Because you can tell usually when people, just, you can just see it in their eyes, you can see it in their face when they're just exhausted and they're like second guessing themselves. Mm -hmm. I'll go up to them and I'll be like, hey, you know, I'll try to talk to them and try to kind of like get them hyped. Just be like, hey, remember why you look? I always ask people all the time. One of the first questions I ask them is like, "What made you fall in love with wrestling?" And they'll tell me, 
And then whenever there's a time like that where I, I see like they're probably trying to like maybe give up a little bit, I'll be like, hey, remember that? Remember what made you fall in love with wrestling? Like, yeah, I'm like, think about it. And then kind of usually that helps. And sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Um, if you can tell sometimes though, if somebody's gonna stick it out or not. I, I hate to sound negative, but. Yeah, I there's, mean, I think it's like with, the, with most like sports, yeah. I guess you can you could probably tell like if you coach anything, you could, you kind of can tell when when kids have like a passion for it or if they're just you know trying something new. Yeah, absolutely, and um, and it's one of those things where you you want to do something so bad and you're so fixated on doing this one thing and then you do it and you're just you tell yourself, oh crap, it's harder than it looks. Like this is not what I expected. It's as long as you come to that realization, you're like, hey, it's not for me. It's cool. Like, total, total respect. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna, like, oh, fucking loser, blah, 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 or, you know, bad mouth. And it's like, hey, it's not for everyone because it's not. Wrestling is hard. I tell them that all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, is there a backstory? to the all me entrance theme or do, and, and do you listen to it outside of wrestling context uh okay so the backstory is one of my clients at the time when that album came out she told me hey listen to this because we would always just exchange exchange music mm -hmm. and she was like hey listen to this album tell me which ones you like and i remember i, I listened to it and i gave her a list i'm like oh i like this one that, that, that all me was one of them and then so at the time i would put whatever songs I liked from the album onto a playlist and I was just listening to stuff. And I remember I was in a car with a friend and um, that song came out and my friend was, my friend stopped. Oh, I changed the song. It's so annoying. <laughs> right? Uh, I was like, oh no, but I like it. Blah, 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 whatever. And so that happened and I remember I kept that like that. So I changed it or whatever. Uh, that stayed with me and I remember when I turned heel, when you had me turn heel at Freelance, I was coming out to Cheval, which is my favorite rock band, and I was coming out to one of their songs. And um, to me, a lot of people at Freelance were coming out with a lot of rock music. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. rock or any sort of, like, just rock, right? To me, I was like, no one comes out to hip-hop, really, at Freelance or rap or anything. And then I was like, what song should I come out to? And then I remembered that time when I was in the car, I'm like, oh, this song is annoying. I'm like, oh... Why is it annoying? And then I listen to the crap. Uh, I listen to the lyrics, and it's just basically talking about how good, of, like just gloating and just you know you're fucking better than everyone. And I was like, <laughs> this is a really good heel song. I'm gonna use this, and it's stuck. And now people tell me like Bryce, he'll tell me like, don't ever change your song. You can't change your song. It fits you. And Dude, I, it's <laughs> it's just like whenever I hear it now, like in just in passing, I'll, I'll be like, that's just the. That's all I think about is just your, your entrance. Yeah. And there's nothing else. <laughs> Not even Drake. Yeah. Uh, uh, our friends at the Two Heel and a Face podcast oh, ask, boy. or not even ask. This is a this is a demand. Oh boy. This is a, create your own bar appetizer. Create my own bar appetizer. I'm trying. Let's go with like a. Maybe it might exist. Honestly. Um, Let's go with a brownie base. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. With <laughs> walnuts inside because I love oh, uh, yeah. brownies with walnuts. And on top of it lies a cheese danish. This sounds dangerous. And then on top of that lies a cinnamon roll from Cinnabon. Oh, my God. And let's just <laughs> say it's a cupcake. And just, <laughs> just take that and deep fry it. <laughs> there you go. Like a slather of with chocolate syrup. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get diabetes. I oh, dude. <laughs> it's come. Yeah, it's come. Uh, this last couple, last set of questions are all from uh, our good friend, Birdo, a.k.a. Scrump. Okay. Uh, one half of the yeah. host of the PWT cast. Which I've done. Yes, you have. Yeah. Uh, Let's do the we'll do these ones in rapid fire because there's a couple of them. Okay. Uh, favorite Pokemon? Kylie Ray. That's a great answer. Uh, favorite set of gear you've made? Favorite set of gear? Uh, man, there's a lot. 
I know it's supposed to be rapid fire, but there's so much. Um, it has to be probably yours, the jumpsuit that I made you. Oh man, that's a lot of people's favorite gear now. It's so cool. Uh, when I made it, I was just like, I remember I, I couldn't stop smiling as I was making it. Just like, oh my god, this is so cool. Um, your jumpsuit, uh, Kylie Ray's um, debut impact rainbow gear. Oh, that was so good. I like that, that one. one. Um, Trevor Outlaw's um, new gear that he has. I'm pretty sure he's probably going to debut it tomorrow at Zello. Oh, yeah. Um, it's very intricate. And it just, I like when gear pushes me. Mm -hmm. it, like, pushes my limits and just, like, very creative. Uh, and then probably, like, my favorite set of gear that I've ever made myself was the gear that I wore for a good majority of my first title run. It's the black, gold, and white gear. Oh, yeah. That one. Um, the yeah. classic gear. Yeah, I actually <laughs> I, I want to remake it too. Just yeah. because I love it so much, yeah. Oh yeah, you should. Uh, favorite 90s cartoon? Doug. Hell yeah. I love Doug. <laughs> I just, you know what? We just started re-watching Doug because it's on Hulu. Is it really? It is. Oh, uh, well, I'm getting Hulu. And it still holds up. It's, it's still, awesome. it's like hilarious. I was like, this is so funny. Skeeter, Mr. Dink. <laughs> Mr. There you go. <laughs> Everything. Up. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's the best and worst thing about teaching? Uh, best thing is being able to see them succeed. Um, so just being able to like see them either get matches or going out there and getting a reaction where the the fans are just like they're really in, invested in them and it's just like they care about them and just seeing them do well honestly because. I'm a small part of their journey. They, they're the ones who are putting in all the work and decide to probably take my opinion into however they want to take it. Um, but just seeing them, just being, seeing them out in the ring and just seeing them just, I don't know, just seeing them. Seeing, seeing your kids grow up. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> almost like that where it's just kind of like seeing them come out. Like I remember, like I remember watching a, um, Darius Luttrell. Mm-hmm. When he wrestled at when we went to Superkick and he came with us. Oh yeah! And he wrestled <laughs> in uh, that smoky little room, <laughs> yeah. and like both of us were by ringside, uh, and just like seeing him wrestle, like seeing him go out there and gain crowd reactions and stuff like that. I was like, that's so fucking cool. Like the fact that I know that I had like a small little piece to of like help to get him to where he's at right now, and he was so happy. I remember how happy he was. I remember he called his wife, and he was like. You know, called his wife and like called like some of his family members and like oh, I had my first match and he was like so happy in Canada. Yeah, actually, <laughs> dude, like who debuts in another country? <laughs> <laughs> That's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I remember telling him. I remember we told him that it was like he was like he was so happy that day too. But yeah, just seeing things like that. Even when I watched the kids um, do the pre-show matches before mm -hmm. before freelance and just seeing them go out there and do their thing and just taking everything that they learned and they worked on and just like applying it in the ring and just seeing it all come together. Like, it's so cool. Um, the worst thing about teaching is what have to be, luckily it hasn't happened, knock on wood, uh, seeing any of them get hurt. Mm. Uh, and it also, there can be some times when I, like my patience wears really thin. <laughs> It happens. Yeah, it does. And I, I'm like, I've, I've had so many people tell me, like, dude, you have so much patience with these kids. And I'm like, uh, like, they, that's what they need. Like, it, it makes no sense to yell at them and, oh, do uh, a thousand this or a thousand that, like, for punishment because you can't get it. It's like, no, it comes to a certain time when some, sometimes we're, we're teaching certain things and I'll tell them, like, hey, they don't get it. But no matter how many different ways I try to explain it to them, they don't get it. And I'll tell them, hey, take five. Get out of the ring. Just take some time for yourself. And usually I'll have them like, come back in the ring and try it again. And they get it. But it's just, after a while, I'm just kind of like, do, do this. No, do this. No, do this. Can you please do just, this? Just go chill. Yeah, and then that, that's when I tell them, I'm like, all right, uh, take five. <laughs> and uh, Berto's last question here, as per usual, uh, what happened to the lost city of Atlantis? That's another podcast for another day. <laughs> I can't answer that. I'll probably write it out and just slip it under his door. <laughs> just give him give him the map. Yeah. 
in the kid. Like it actually still exists. You just have to go here. <laughs> well, that's it. That's all the questions we got. Um, yes. Thank you for, for sitting down and, and talking. I know we've been like trying to hammer out a day for a while now, but yeah. But I'm glad we were able to do this. Uh, usually at the end here, I kind of give the person to uh, anything you need to plug, anything you want to talk about, anything at all. The floor is yours, my friend. Uh, let's see. Uh, next show is Black Label Pro, August 22nd. I get to wrestle Alex Shelley. Um, he asked for a rematch, so that's pretty cool. Had um, calling you out. He was, yeah. Um, no, but he, he's, he's a good dude, too. I respect him a lot, in and out of the ring. Um, we're actually friends. He called me his friend, and I was like, oh, that's... So that's cool. kind of cool. I was like, that's so cool. Um, but uh, we have, I have that show, and then that's pretty much what I have coming up as far as wrestling goes. Uh, Freelance Wrestling Academy, if you want to learn how to wrestle, I'm teaching a brand new class of students tomorrow, so there's that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then social media is just... Instagram and Twitter is the same. I don't know. I have to get a new Twitter handle. But it's D A Z E Z H A V O O H V. So that's about it. I don't have a pro wrestling tea store. I know. I'm gonna get one. Too. Not yet. That's Not what I was. Yet. I told. I did a, a Ringsiders podcast um, this past week. Cool dudes, and I think that episode is coming out Sunday. But um, they were like. I told him, I was like, you're the first podcast that I'm talking and saying that I'm going to get a Pro Wrestling Tees store, so now I have to do it, because <laughs> I said it out loud. So yeah, as soon as I sell out of all these shirts that I have, which I still have to get, um, it's been taking a while because of like the whole COVID situation, but uh, I have to go pick them up, and as soon as I sell out all of these, I think I'm going to go and finally pull the trigger on it. So, Excellent. Soon enough. <laughs> now, and then everyone will get them. Yes. Hopefully. <laughs> if they like me. <laughs> Oh, they will. I know. Uh, thank you again, man. Of course. And uh, 